The coolest thing about the Sony a7R5 is that it's 61 megapixels, the highest resolution full frame camera on the market. Let's talk about whether it's worth the hype. Is high resolution something you need? Is it worth the potential sacrifices? And who exactly is this camera for? In this review, I'm gonna talk through important specs, performance, and image quality. I'll wrap up with some thoughts about this camera and who I think it's for. Stick around to the end for my one big complaint about the Sony a7R5. I've been testing this camera for a couple of months now, and it's an incredible camera, but there are some drawbacks to discuss too. My name is Mark Bergerin, and I do practical gear reviews here on YouTube. Please hit the subscribe button, it really helps me out. All right, so let's talk specs. As I mentioned, it's 61 megapixels. It does 8K video or 4K 60 video. It has a tilt and flip screen. It has dual card slots on the side. It shoots 10 frames per second, continuous shooting. It has a 9.4 million dot viewfinder. And as I would expect, the a7R5 has the same solid build quality that you get with all the other Sony cameras. It feels similar to my a7 IV, my a7S III, solid and durable and well-built. The biggest thing I noticed when I picked this up was the tilt flip screen. Now there's been a lot of debate about whether you want a tilt screen or a flip screen. And I think Sony has done both quite well in this design. I've been a big fan of the flip out screen for a while using the a7S III and the a7 IV, but some people prefer the tilt screen. So if you're shooting vertical low images, I think you're gonna want a flip screen. If you just wanna shoot something down low or above you that's horizontal, the tilt screen is gonna be better. Other than that, the ergonomics and handling on this camera are very similar to what you would expect from previous versions. It feels good in the hand, has a nice grip, it's easy to reach all the controls, and I'm not sure really what I would improve. All my previous complaints about Sony cameras, about placement of the record button, other stuff have been resolved. I really appreciate that Sony is actually listening to their customers and taking feedback to create the best products. As Sony is known for, the focus performance on this camera is great. It feels super snappy, it tracks subjects well, and I have no complaints. In terms of low light performance, that's a concern for some people with such a high resolution camera, but it's not really designed to excel in low light. I know there's a lot of debate on YouTube about whether high resolution cameras or low 12 megapixel, for example, sensors like the a7S III are better in low light. But the reality is that in my experience, I just, I see a little bit more grain and noise in these high resolution images. If you're shooting below ISO 6400, I think this camera is great. Above ISO 6400, I think the Sony a7S III and the a7 IV are gonna have better looking files. They might not print as well, and I know there's a lot of concern about making large prints and which one looks better, but this camera is just, in my opinion, not as good in low light. I'm actually gonna be doing a full comparison of the Sony a7R5, the a7 IV, and the a7S III in low light to get more detail and perspective on that. So if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out. And you can be notified when that video comes out. Now, image quality is the true reason that people pick up the a7R5. At 61 megapixels, it's a beast. It's super high resolution, whether you're shooting images commercially or you wanna make big landscape prints for your walls. This is the camera for you. Sure, there's other high resolution cameras on the market like the Fuji GFX 100, 100 megapixels, but Sony has managed to deliver 61 megapixels in an incredibly small and compact body. If you're talking about the GFX 100, it's medium format, it's much larger, and it's not nearly as fast in terms of autofocus and other features. Additionally, the, the Fuji GFX is super expensive. This camera is about $3,500, whereas that one is closer to, or I think more than 6,000. We'll talk more about alternatives later. Now, image quality. The images out of the Sony a7R5 look excellent. They have incredible sharpness and detail coming out of that 61 megapixel sensor. 14.8 stops of dynamic range. What else can you ask for? The only thing that might be improved on this is if you had better noise performance at ISOs above 6400, but that's not really a reasonable expectation. The biggest thing I realized is when shooting with such a high resolution camera is that my lenses don't look as sharp as they do on my a7S III or my a7 IV. You're gonna see more of the flaws and lack of sharpness in the edges, especially at the weaker and lower quality lenses. A few other useful features that I wanted to mention. With the 
pixel shift technology on the Sony a7R5, you can capture up to 240 megapixel images, which is just mind boggling. I tried this and I was really impressed with the results. Uh, you have to use Sony's free software to process the images. But if you have an amazing landscape shot that you know you really wanna make a huge print of, it's a cool tool. Another cool feature of this camera is the ability to shoot 8K video. I'm not really sure what function that has out in the marketplace. Uh, most people are still looking at 4K displays or even lower resolution. Um, but you could pull still images from the video and have them be at 30 megapixels, which is impressive. The a7R5 is in a class of its own. The a7R4 is probably its closest competitor, which is just the previous generation. Stepping down, you could look at the Canon R5 or the Nikon Z8, but they're both only 45 megapixels, which is quite a bit less than 61. As I mentioned earlier, the Fuji GFX100, nearly $6,700, nearly double the price of the a7R5 and it's medium format. It's more of a specialty camera. The lenses are only gonna be compatible with that camera, whereas lenses on this camera are compatible with all of the other Sony a7 series cameras. The cool thing about this ecosystem is that they have all the different targeted versions. So you got the R series, which is the high resolution. You got the S series, which is more video focused and low light focused. And the regular a7, which is targeted at kind of a hybrid uh, middle option. And all those Sony cameras have the same lenses. As far as value on this camera, if you need the highest resolution possible images, the a7R5 is a great camera. I love the detail you can get, 3,500 bucks, it's an impressive camera. I think someone who makes big prints is really gonna be the target audience for this camera. If you're gonna check it out, head down to the link in the description, check the latest price, and I appreciate the small amount of support that that gives me. So who is this camera for? Basically commercial photographers and landscape photographers. You'll get super detailed images and you can make either crop in significantly or you can make really large prints. However, my one complaint about this camera is the file size. When you go out and shoot thousands of images on one project, it'll quickly clog up your hard drives. I tend to shoot a lot of images and this camera was definitely slowing down my workflow. I noticed it slowed down my computer significantly when I was trying to edit the files. I normally blaze through my images, but each file was taking just a tiny bit longer to load and you multiply that by a bunch of images and it makes your workflow much slower. At over 100 megabytes per image, you better have a big hard drive or a RAID server uh, to fill up and store all those images. Because of this, I don't plan on keeping this camera. Um, I think it's awesome, I loved trying it out, but it's not really for me. I'll be sticking with the Sony a7 IV and the a7S III for video, uh, but I love that there is a high resolution option if I wanted it. I hope you enjoyed my review. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And as always, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear your feedback and I'll see you in the next video.